Okay, hello everybody, welcome, and uh, I'm Chef Carl, and welcome to another episode of Dinner at Jill's. It's going to be nice and exciting for you this evening. Uh, we're going to do a few little uh, Indian stroke Asian delights for you this evening. Uh, first of all, uh, Jill has lovingly prepared some uh, delicious tandoori chicken, and what she's done here is taken some tandoori paste and mixed it with some natural yogurt and married up some uh, lovely chicken drumsticks, and we're going to whack these into the oven and roast them off. Uh, it's always good to do these about 24 hours in advance, just so um, the, the yogurt gets a chance to, to dig into the meat, you know, the natural enzymes and bacteria in there and start breaking down that meat so they're lovely and tender when they come out of the oven. So we're going to just quickly grab a roasting tray and just give these another quick massage, make sure they're all purely coated with the, uh, the yogurt marinade. And these have been sat now in the fridge overnight and these are going to be absolutely delicious when they're roasted. And then what we're going to do, we're going to bang them into a high oven and we're going to roast them off then for yeah, around about 25-30 minutes just until the skin's got a lovely uh, golden, golden colour with this lovely tandoori marinade on it. Delicious. So into the oven we go. So while they're in the oven, uh, I'm just going to also, we're going to be working on a, a lovely fish curry tonight, a really nice gentle Indian style curry with an onion based sauce. So uh, on the back stove there I've got a, a, hand, a, a nice hot pan and it's uh, preheated. And what we're going to do is we're going to just roughly chop on a nice chili pepper there, a nice hot red chili pepper because this is going to be like a red curry sauce to go with the, with the fish that we have. And I've already deseeded this, and what I've done, I just split it in half and scraped out the seeds with my fingers and made sure I give myself a, a really good uh, hand washing after. Otherwise, you know, if you rub your eye or something, it can be quite sore. So into my pan anyway. This is nice and hot, and I've got this heating up on the back stove. I'm going to put a generous splash of olive oil. Now, normally when you're making an Indian style curry, you use a clarified butter, which is lightly spiced, and we call that ghee. So I'm just going to drop the chili peppers in there and just get them just sort of uh, fermenting in that raw oil. And while they're just ticking over on the back stove, I'm just going to quickly peel some garlic. And then we're going to chuck a, I don't know, maybe two cloves of garlic, I think, into this curry because we want them nice, strong flavours. And chop down the garlic. Now, what I'm going to do with this sauce, as you see a little bit later on, I'm going to slightly uh, just cook everything chunky and rustic in the pan just to release all the flavours and a little bit later on we're going to blend that up. And then we're going to take two and a half minutes brown onions. I'm just going to dice these up. So I'm going to set this little half off just on the side there and we're going to use that in our rice dish as well a little bit later. We're going to get these into our pot with our garlic and chili. And we're going to cook these down until, the, until they get to a, what we call an opaque stage. And what I mean by opaque is where, you, where the onion becomes a little bit translucent in, in the pan and you can sort of see through it. And then when we get to that stage then we're going to start to add some spices to really get the flavours happening in the pan. Our rice dish now. So again, I'm going to take that bit of onion that I saved uh, from earlier on. And I'm going to dice this just a little bit smaller than what I did with the, uh, with the, the curry onions because I'm not blending this down, I actually want the texture of the onion through the rice dish. So I'm going to cut this into a brunoise cup which basically is the French for a small dice. What I'm also going to do then is I've, I've just got some butter here. This is at room temperature but I mean you can use it straight from the fridge. But I'm going to use about 50 grams of butter. Well, I've got another pan warming on the stove, so what I'm going to do is just put my butter in there. And as you can see, this pan's quite hot, and I don't want this butter to really go too brown in the pan. And I'm just going to take my onions and start sweating them down. And I'm going to take that other half a clove of garlic. And I'm going to just really, really finely, finely chop this. Just want this flavour to 
go right through that right on the curve bit. garlic which is sweating off in the butter. I'm just going to probably uh, put about a cup of rice straight into that pan. And now I'm just going to stir that around just making sure that there's a real good coating of butter all around that rice. The turmeric which is a, a, an Indian spice and turmeric grows as a root just like ginger teaspoon of cardamom. This, I'm using ground cardamom but you can do, use whole cardamom pots. My onions and chili and I'm just checking that again and that's coming to start to sweat down really nicely but what I want to do, I want to speed this up a little bit. So what I'll do with that is I'll just chuck a lid on and that'll sort of trap the steam inside the uh, pot there and it'll start to break down the onions just a little bit quicker. Okay so I can just hear my rice crackling now on the stove. So I'm giving that a real good stir and you can really smell that turmeric and the garlic in there in the rice along with them onions. So I'm just going to fill this up now about uh, two thirds of the way up the pan and just pop that right back on the stove and allow it to boil away until the rice is done. Also my, my onions, my chili and garlic is nicely sweating off in the pan here. And what I'm going to do now, I've got a red capsicum, I'm just going to chop that in half and de-seed it and we're going to add it to these now because the onions are just about there. Capsicum always cooks just that little bit quicker than onions. I don't know, I think it's probably got a little bit more water content in there, but this is why I'm adding the capsicum at a later stage, just so I don't over this. this roughly, as you can see, into the large chunks. And then we're going to stick this in with our onions and our chili pepper and our garlic. And this capsicum will also give a wonderful co uh, a colour to this curry. As I did say, it is a red curry, so that's why we're using red capsicums. You can do this green as well, and simple, just use green capsicums. We're going to go on to another component of our dish, and uh, we're going to make a, a lovely, nice sort of mint salad with tomato and cucumber, we're going to make a lovely yogurt dressing to go with that. Um, I'm just going to cut the, the, the tips off. This is a, a cos heart, you know, when you get that large cos lettuce. Well, I've taken away all the outside green leaves and I've only just taken the nice sweet and uh, the sort of uh, half green, so to speak, leaves. I'm going to use these a little bit later on for a garnish for when our chicken's ready. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use all the crisp white bits of the leaves. I'm just going to lightly shred them up, disposing of the core, fresh tomatoes, which I just got from Jill's garden earlier on the seed. Take off them little stalky bits there because we don't want them in our salad. And then cut them into rather large white sized chunks. End off at the bottom end. Cut it down the length and down the length again until we get these large fingers. And just chop that up nice and chunky to go in this take a bunch of fresh mint and just sort of remove the leaves away from the stalky bit in the center. It's all right if you get the smaller pieces of stalk in there because they're actually okay and nice and edible. They're quite uh, tender, but the center stalk can be fairly good. We'll scrunch these mint leaves up roughly. Doesn't matter how you do this, and just chop these in what we call a chiffonade or, or, or a, 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 a fine shred, so to speak, but not quite as thin as julienne. Right, so our, fry, uh, our spices are being uh, fried off now and they get to that stage now where you can really smell that perfume and that, that smell of India is really filling up the room. So to this now we want to sort of bring the temperature down a little bit and bring this to a bit of a simmer. So what I have is a tin of diced tomatoes. And what we're going to do is just open these up and bang them straight in there. And that takes the heat straight off the bottom of the pan so that immediately stops the frying of the spices. Give that a bit of a stir. simmer for a little bit just so those flavours really get married together in the sauce. Alright, I've got a, a large
large spring onion here. Just going to take the end off that. And I'm going to finely slice this. Let me just bang that in the salad. What we do, just give it a little bit of a mix. And already you can smell that fresh mint running through there. Oh. So I've got a stick blender here, and what I'm going to do is just plonk that right in the middle. And blend this down until it's a smooth sauce. Okay, so that's all nice and blended now. And uh, what I'm going to do is, I'll just take that off and stick it on the sink. Is because I added a little bit of water to that, I'm just going to pop it just back on the stove and just let this slowly simmer down now and then let the, the water naturally evaporate from there. So I just get that lovely pureed sauce then of the, the, the capsicum and the, the onions and the garlic and all that lovely spices. Just, just make a small incision using the very end piece of the tail and holding it down onto the chopping board. Slide it a really sharp and, and flexible knife. You know, if you can get a filleted knife from a good catering hardware store, then do so because they are good tools. And then just drag that slightly and just rub in gently, just coming away in one piece. And you just do it nice and gentle right down the center of the fish where those pin bones are. And I'm just going to remove them all in one piece. So I'm just going to take this and drop it straight into our simmering sauce. Just give it a gentle stir down into probably about uh, one and a half centimeter strips. And then do the same size. And have these wonderfully, lovely, large dices of chunky grenadier flesh. I'm going to take that off. I've also checked the oven and just pulled out our tandoori chicken. I'm just letting them rest on the side there and they're wonderfully done. What I'm going to do first is I'm just going to take my microplane and just put a little bit of lemon zest in there. Nice and all light. Make sure this is a real zingy sound. And I'm just going to take one cheek off the lemon, just push out any seeds that might be there. And I'm just going to give that a real good squeeze. Right. Of natural yogurt. Just give it the pot a bit of a stir then. I'm just going to pop I don't know, about three or four tablespoons in. Get your hands in there and give that a good mix. Here is a pinch of uh, freshly chopped coriander, but we're not going to chop this too fine. Just enough to break up the leaves. This is nicely drained off now. We're going to pop that and coat it and enriched as well with that lovely butter that we fried the onions off with earlier on. And that's what makes this rice so special and wonderful. It's going to be nice and fragrant. You get the nice yellow color from the turmeric that we put in there. And we've got this wonderful red sauce. So I did say it was an Indian red Indian fish curry or Indian red curry with fish. And that fish has just been simmering away in this liquid now only for about 10 minutes. And just to finish this off, I'm going to go into the oven in a second and grab out my naan breads. And, uh, I've got some chapatis in there as well. Now, naan bread is a lovely night, light bread made by uh, the Indians and normally cooked in a tan. What can I say? Hey, it's uh, another Chef Carl treat. Bon appetit. And this has been Dinner at Jim's. See you all again soon.